<laughs> Welcome everybody to rumble.com slash JJW. Today's episode is drugs, debauchery, and Delta Force. Oh my gosh. What crap does that mean, dude? Oh my, I found this story linked to another story and I'm just like, oh my, this is, this is, this is great. Well, it's not great. It's, it's horrible and, and, and frightening, but uh, fascinating. So we'll get into that. Good morning. How are you, Deacon? Excellent. How are you? Uh, I woke up, I woke up and I was, I checked my watch. Oh no, six o'clock. Oh my, I'm so tired. I jumped out of bed and take a shower and then wash and, you know, all of that, just try to shake off the cobwebs. I wake up and then I get out of the shower. I check my watch again. Oh no, it's five. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm messed two. up. At five o'clock, I was already up two hours, unintentionally up two hours. <laughs> Yay. I didn't throw up though today. So today is a good day. Yeah. you know why? Because I didn't eat anything yesterday. Uh, the last time I ate was at like 1 p.m. So I did not oh. eat supper. Therefore, I did not have anything to be sick with. Was this this a, oh, I feel good. Was this an, was this an active plan? Like No, just, uh, no because I was so sick yesterday morning, it just kind of yeah. with you. And so I was queasy all day, and I got down a little bit of food. Ashley's so sweet. I love her so much. She... uh she brought me a little bit of food up here yesterday because she knew I wasn't feeling good. So she came up here and brought me a little bit of food. So I kind of munched on it and I kind of felt a little bit better because I needed a little food in me. Yeah. I got off of my, uh, you know, my, uh, diabetes medicine that I was taking that was going to yeah, yeah. get my body through hell. My doctor was yeah. like, okay, you got to take this slow because you're going to go through hell period, period. Yeah. yeah. And I did for about a month. You saw me. Um, yeah. I tried you you get, seem to st you were real bad for yeah, a, a week or two. Like I was yeah. like really getting worried, and then you seemed to stabilize into just normal, unpleasant. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it got better to the point that um, I was actually um, hungry all the time. You know, I That's got good. to the point That's where really I good. was hungry, and so um, I, I it was my fault. I waited to the last minute to get my medicine refilled. And yeah. the pharmacy didn't have it for a couple of days. It took them a couple of days to get the medicine in. So right. I was off my, excuse me, I was off my medicine for about three days. And it's taken <clears throat> like five days to get used to this medicine in my body again. It is, it's I mean, it's kind crazy. of fascinating that, that you can shake it so fast and then have to go through the trauma of, a do the, of getting well, on it again. And, and that's, I mean, I might, I might be incorrect, but that is the, the only logical explanation that Ashley and I could figure out was that right. because I was, I was fine and I was eating and I was actually hungry. You know, I wasn't just like eating to pacify, you know, let me eat, let me eat a small meal. You know, I was actually like, Ooh, yes, I will eat the double cheeseburger and not just <laughs> eat half of a meal. So yeah, I'm I'm feeling good. It, it wasn't intentional, but um, but yeah, I'm feeling and now good. You're, and now you're stocked up. You're ready for a, a three month Armageddon. If that happens, you've got your meds. I don't know if you see a, I don't know if you see ads for it because I do, but only because I'm they're targeted at me, you know. <laughs> but Maybe. I see ads for ribelsis. If you ever see that that medicine ribelsis, okay. that's the name of the medicine I take. And it even says in the ad and stuff when you see it on TV and you see the stuff, it's like it, 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 uh, <laughs> it aggressively attacks or it aggressively gets your A one C down, and it did. It aggressively yeah. my A one C down. My A one C was like eleven. And if people don't know what A one C is, it's your uh, blood sugar over a course of about three months. It's the average blood sugar, I guess, of about three months. So your your blood, not blood sugar, but blood. Um, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and mine was really it's high. A, it's a strong indicator for people that are pre-diabetic or are diabetic. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a long-term measurement. So it gives you an idea of how stable mm -hmm. you are, how, how you your, keep blood in your or sugar in your right. blood and whatnot. And, and normal people are what, like four five, six, something like that. Four. You, you gotta, five. you gotta be below six for sure. Okay. You know, mine was it's over six in problem. Yeah. My, mine was 11. So you can see what the, the major problem is there. It was double. And I was having doctors and medical people tell me that I was going to, you, you've got, um, you got about a year left. <laughs> you got about five years left. Yeah. Well, if you don't get this done. 
So, uh, so yeah, that's that's what my, so my C is my A one C is down. It got down to seven. The last time my wife is my wife is um, uh, glucose very glucose sensitive and and almost mm. in a pre diabetic range. So for a long time, for years, she would have to prick her finger and check her blood every morning, and she was getting it under control with metformin. I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with the drug metformin. Metformin was one that made me feel like uh, an alien was coming out of my stomach. Like it, it, it was pain coming out of my. Mm. I couldn't take metformin. It was a bad one for me. Well, for a long time, she was having to do the that, and she was, you know, tracking her A one C and her blood sugar and all that stuff, and, and she was also a little bit unhappy about it, but kind of like you know, like this is this reality or whatever. And and there was this one and and. You know, she would be really careful to not have sugars and, you know, kind of, kind of that stuff. And I was a little bit more like, I mean, like whatever. And, and, you know, carte blanche about everything that I would eat, including sugar. And I remember this one time that there was something that came up and they, the doctors had to run a blood sample on me and they ran a blood sample and they sent a letter to me. And my wife was constantly going on about her A1C being just a little too high and just working on getting it down and working on getting it down. And this letter came in <clears throat> And part of the blood panel was they did my A1C. And she she thought she was going to open that letter and see, aha, uh -huh, see, your A1C is high too. You got to be more careful. And they opened the letter and my A1C was like 3.4. <laughs> it, like, it was like way low. Some of she you people, are, yeah, some of you people are crazy. <laughs> I used to have a coworker. She still works for the company. She just works in a different building. I used to have a coworker and I swear, I swear to the man Jesus, I'm not lying. She would eat goldfish and pretzels every night for supper. Goldfish crackers and pretzels, and that's what she would eat. <clears throat> or maybe a little beef jerky. No, no, it wasn't pretzels. It was peanuts. Goldfish and peanuts every night for supper. Right. That's what she would eat. And and she and she <clears throat> she smoked. She didn't. She drank diet. <laughs> she drank. She she smoked cigarettes all day long. She drank diet coke. She probably drank fifteen diet cokes a day. A pretzel or a peanuts. wow. Peanuts, no. not fifteen. I bet she did drink I mean, four. It, it, a I lot, bet she too many, too much for a day. Yeah, and and uh, and she would go to the doctor and come back, and she was the healthiest son of a bitch you'd ever seen in your life. You're like, how how yeah. are you not dead? I would be dead. <laughs> well, I can't hey, eat peanuts. one Jolly Rancher, and my freaking A one C goes right. up. 45. You're very sensitive to it. Yeah, you should just. <laughs> I don't know. You're just a sensitive person, Andy. And, you know, some of us are just insensitive you <laughs> about are. all I'm kinds of things. <laughs> I'm, I'm white too sensitive. Uh, all right. Well, so we got we got some interesting stuff to talk about today. And we got some other news. So, But I just want to say good morning to everybody. Welcome. I hope you're ready to start the day. Today's going to be the best Wednesday we've ever had. And, uh, and we got <laughs> Thursday. It's going to be great. Is it really? No oh. way. Okay. All right. Today's uh, January 11th, 2023. We are at the dawn of a whole new era in America. Something, something, something. But we are. Let's get it. Let's get into stuff. <laughs> let's get, actually, we have to start with some. We, we actually, I'm so happy, but then I'm like, I got some bad news, but we got some great, we got some interesting stuff too. We got All right. So, presentation. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. It's not good. All right. Uh, so uh, now I have to now I have to suddenly and tragically shift you, gears because I need to get this bad news out take, of here. You've got to take that smile and kind of turn it down. <clears throat> yeah, let me just go to a more solemn tone here on the Year Two Dance Show. <sighs> that was pretty good transition right there. As we talk about, it's really bad. Actually, it's bad. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's it's actually really really bad. Thanks. <laughs> um, so I saw this this morning. I saw this on President Trump's. Truth Social, which, by the way, I understand is a social network and it gets all kinds of like, uh, you know, it gets some report of being a healthy environment. My impression of Truth Social is that it's one person's Twitter. <laughs> it is it is Donald Trump's Twitter and there's a bunch of other people that have accounts and nothing much happens. Over okay. there. But I saw him post about this. You're leaving me dangling. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you have ever watched the Newsmax or Fox News, especially during a presidential season, you will be familiar with uh, Diamond and Silk, uh, the the political commentary duo. 
And it was reported by to me by Donald Trump, but it, it was reported in the news that Diamond of Diamond and Silk actually has passed away. She passed away. Can I tell you something? Yeah. I have no clue who these people are. No. You don't know who these One, are? <clears throat> The first time I had heard of Diamond and Silk was yesterday. And if I had to answer that question on a game show, I would have guessed that they were a new rap dude. Right. Uh, these two ladies, they're, they're in their 50s. I think they're sisters. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, Diamond is the one on the left here. She was 51. And they actually, they they I remember first seeing them on, Fox News during like the 2018 news cycle or whatever they'd pop up usually like on Saturday night or something and they and they and they had this uh great shtick to be honest they they would both of them on the same camera like a web camera here calling into Fox News and they'd sit yeah. side by side and they would back and forth and their back and forth game was so good um, anyway, it, uh, they were, they were very entertaining and very, um, okay. very interesting people. And, uh, unfortunately, uh, Miss Diamond, AKA, uh, Lynette Hardaway, uh, has, uh, well, what'd she pass away from? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's out yet, but if it, so for, for people out there that kind of anybody that kind of like watches this show, they'd probably more or less be, have seen these folks before. So I just want to acknowledge that. I like, I liked them. I would, I would okay. be flipping through things and I would, oh, my screen just went black. That's weird. Can you still hear me? Okay. It's yeah. back. I don't know what's yeah, going sorry. on. And my, my whole, my whole display just went black. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, Political commentary duo Diamond of Diamond and Silk passed away. That's very sad news. Uh, another thing. So let's let's move on. Uh, you guys know how much I love uh, my rep Dan Crenshaw. Uh, it turns out that <clears throat> during the uh, floor debates the other night, you know, because we streamed three, four, two or three days, uh, several hours sessions of the Republicans battling for control of the Speaker of the House. It turned out that during one of those days, uh, Dan Crenshaw was caught with bloody knuckles, bloody knuckles on the floor of the House. Uh, we don't know exactly the circumstances, but it is reported that, so it's reported, I'm not saying it's fact, I'm saying it is reported that he was so frustrated and angry with the, uh, with the uh, back and forth that Dan Crenshaw punched a wall, punched a wall, perhaps on the Capitol, uh, Capitol grounds. I display just went out again. I don't know what's going on. Um, so, uh, this has actually turned into a bit of a meme here on revolver.com. Uh, it is, uh, it, here, here is a photo of him sitting in the house chamber and you can see his bloody knuckles there. Uh, so people took this and they started uh, started posting memes, including uh, Dan Crenshaw loses his bid for Homeland Security chair. And then his drywall says, I'm in danger. Uh, better yet, uh, here is, let's see, here is, here's a, here's a post of Dan Crenshaw when you sober up and see that you punched a hole through the drywall. And uh, I think my favorite, th this isn't, this isn't going to work with this display. Here's my favorite. There's Dan Crenshaw, and he has a patch over his bloody knuckle. <laughs> so that's my rep. He uh, he has a bit of a temper, I guess. Uh, someone said... <clears throat> you would hope that a guy with an eye patch does have a temper, a bit of a temper. I, would, I want my eye-patched individuals to be a bit rough. You know? Yeah. That's just coming from me personally. I don't want an eye-patched individual to be pleasant. That's just going to throw me way off, you know? So yeah, I, I can see he, he looks like he would be a prick at times. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just okay. saying, I'm just saying if you, if you have an eye patched friend, wouldn't you want him to have a, you know, uh, uh, an ill tempered disposition? Yeah. I mean that, or like really lean into the eye patch thing, and maybe kind of like develop a little bit of a R. <laughs> Get a parrot, or wear a do rag all the time, or something. You ain't got to go like full tri corner hat. Yes, wear a you, it should be. 
you should do, you'd be doing a do rag, and you should be like it, it should be not quite pirate, but right. like not like you should be pirate. you should be kind of going biker, and then people right. are like, right. it seems like you're going biker, but it's very very right. piratey, right? right. And, and, and <laughs> so so yeah, you keep the little you kind of going biker. You don't do a giant gold hoop. You you do a little yeah. Like, Dying yeah just like you know, like like yeah. so that everybody around you could be like it seems like you're going for this barker look but it's it's not quite working and it but they won't want to say looks, anything to you and they're not going to insult you because you look like a badass and and you when you're walking around like on dry land you should be kind of like wobbling a little <laughs> bit just so it, seems, <laughs> it seems like you don't have your <laughs> sea legs out <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's a great one. <laughs> you're just kind <gonna>, of <laughs> while you're standing there, you did a little Johnny Depp wobble. <laughs> and maybe, maybe you can't, maybe you can't get away with walking around with a parrot all the time. But maybe you could train like a pigeon to occasionally land on your shoulder. And then... <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a pigeon. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that's good i like dan, that we're not a good uh, dan crenshaw uh, you know as much as I'm, as possible i'm going to look for opportunities to make fun of dan crenshaw on this show <clears throat> so uh let's see hey um let's uh I, you know there's this stuff about joe biden left some secret documents in a uh office or whatever they were just and, a bunch of mad libs. I wish people would get over it. They were just <laughs> mad libs. Top secret mad libs. Yeah. It was him practicing his letters because he's getting to the arrow. <laughs> he's been doing good with his peas. Have you seen his peas? He's not quite as shaky anymore. He's got the lowercase. Yeah. We're looking really nice. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I see this stuff in the news and I'm just like, look, I didn't care about it when it was Donald Trump. I don't really care about it when it's uh, Joe Biden. Did you hear uh, that he recently had a meeting with his cabinet <clears throat> yesterday? He had a meeting with his cabinet. Mm, I saw that. Yeah, I and, saw that. His and then, cabinet. And then he talked to his desk and then he talked yes. to his wall. And then he had a meeting <laughs> with his chair. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so there, I, I'm not even going to really talk about it. I'm just going to mention that I saw it. Yeah, memos. He's left memos somewhere. He and of course he's claiming like, oh, I don't even know how that how that documentation about those top secret documents about of course uh, Ukraine don't. or what? I don't even know how they got there. Okay, I, I don't know how me. Ukraine got twenty billion dollars. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. You, Ukraine? <laughs> Where's that at? I've never heard of that yeah. place before. <clears throat> so, uh, so that's happening. But like, I kind of don't care, and I don't think you care either. Am I guessing I, right? I, I do not care. Oh, he does not care. <laughs> I, does I not do. care. Okay. Now, uh, now these secret documents, they found them because they're investigating the office that he had, I guess, or maybe the other way around. I'm not real sure. Turns out that uh, this this he has this office at at Penn. Was it at Penn State? Penn Biden Center. Anyway, that's where these documents were found. Um <clears throat> This is, I think, where he was supposed to have an office with his son also and uh, some Chinese donors. <laughs> They're all sharing office space. So uh, anyway, I'm, I'm just going to mention it. I don't really care. Do you guys, if you guys care, let me know and we'll like dig into it. But that is not what we're talking about. That's, that's not the story today. All right. My monitors are just blinking and blinking and blinking. So uh, it's driving me nuts because the, the FBI has tapped into us this morning. They're, <laughs> yeah, they're like, they're like, this guy, he's the source of our, <laughs> our, our biggest in, uh, stories. <clears throat> I told you, I know for a yeah. fact, I know for a fact that they're the onto FBI, us, that an FBI oh, yeah. agent well, listens to us occasionally. For a fact. Occasionally. occasionally, he does. Occasionally. They do. The, the FBI. So technically, hey, you the know, FBI it would be, it would be to us. super awesome, Deacon. What would be super awesome <laughs> is that if sometimes our FBI listener were walking into the FBI offices and we're still playing our show on his phone. <sighs> what the hell are you talking about? No, we don't want that. That would be awesome, though. No, it wouldn't be awesome. But, but that would mean that technically... The FBI Andy is inside shit. the offices of the FBI. They've got better <clears throat> shit to do than listen to us. All right. I'm going to re I'm going to, I'm going to have to pull this plug here and it's going to mess stuff up, but I got to do it.
What are you doing? Oh, that's what he's doing. Hi, everybody. My name's Deke, Andy, whatever you want to call me. Would you like me to sing a song? Oh. Hey, you're super close there. How's it, how's it going? Hey, right, guys. Let's see if my regular camera came back yet. Yeah, there we go. Okay. <clears throat> hey. Oh, hey. How are you? How's that I'm hoping the video will stop blinking now. All right. Now, I told you I don't really care about Joe Biden's papers in his office or whatever. But what I do care about is Joe Biden turning off my gas stove. Deacon, do you guys, do you have an electric stove or a gas stove? Electric. <clears throat> uh, I know. I mean, boy, I can't. Uh, I've cooked on electric before. It gets, I think it gets too hot too fast or something. I don't know. I like um, fire. My um, my house is about seventy five years old, and so the top <clears throat> part was built forty years after the bottom part. So I have fuses still; <laughs> those are on their way to getting fixed. Yeah, I still have fuses in part of the house, and then some of my pipes and stuff. The septic and uh, and the bottom part of the house is. I'm on city water. It, it's it's screwed up. I'm on city septic on the top part and my own septic on the bottom. And it's it's all oh, screwed wow. up. old house. That sounds <clears throat> complicated. Yes, well, it is. life's complicated sometimes. sometimes. So so what are you supposed to do if you don't have fuses? You should have fuses. You should have fuses I anyway. I do. Right. We don't have the, the, the box is not a breaker box. It's a few old fuse box. The glass oh. fuses. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Insurance company. Well, I'm glad you guys have electricity. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. A lot of the old houses, okay. a lot of old houses have glass fuses. They're, they're not, I mean, they're a lot safer to have breaker boxes and stuff like that now. And they recommend if you have glass fuses, your insurance is going to be a lot higher. <clears throat> but. <clears throat> <clears throat> If I can get all the glass fuses replaced, my insurance will go down. Mm. My homeowner's insurance. That would be good. Okay. So, but you guys don't have gas for... No. Uh, no. No. Okay. And maybe that's an urban luxury. I don't know. I, I have no idea. All I know is that we have gas water. Don't you have gas for water heater or do you have electric for water heater too? Huh. Okay. Electric water heater. I used to have gas when we owned the house in the country. I had gas and I had a big 500 gallon natural gas tank i think it was five oh, okay gallons. wow that's awesome yeah it was Almost, expensive uh, shit back then i can't imagine uh, what it is today yeah uh, <laughs> it probably isn't that, that's that's true so um this is an article posted over on the wall street journal an opinion section by the editorial board and it's uh title is uh biden is coming for your gas stove and uh, yeah, I'm, if you if you uh, suspect that I'm reading this from an archive version of the article rather than paying the Wall Street Journal, you are correct. But uh, we get the whole article. So there we go. The Consumer Product Safety Commission enlists in the crusade to ban fossil fuels from the kitchen. Uh, now, that's kind of <clears throat> strange, but uh, I I thought that gas stoves work from natural gas, not from fossil fuels where is natural gas a fossil fuel is it really whatever i'm glad all those dinosaurs are dead do you know what a pain in the ass it would be if those dinosaurs were alive right now do you think that all that that's the only thing that it come from is dinosaurs because if so then they we we need to talk about our education system in america dinosaurs and, and plants i'm glad those plants are gone too I've Basically. seen some of those movies where the plants like can grab the animal and then eat the animal. Mm -hmm. Prehistoric nature, you scary dragon size dragon dragonflies like the size of my desk. I wouldn't want to live in a world like that. That would be awesome. Can you imagine? Can, can you imagine if you left your house and like dinosaurs are out there, but they're fine. But you had all the prehistoric insects too. 
<laughs> like insects, just the size of a dog, just constantly in your way. Yeah, but you and, would have really cool shit like the Flintstones. Like if you wanted to cut your grass, you would have like a dinosaur on the end of a stick and you would just have it cut, you know? And you could have like <laughs> dinosaurs as pets. That'd be cool. Mm. No, I, I hadn't heard about this, about the gas stove okay. thing. Yeah, so, to be honest, this just sounds like some fear-mongering, pandering. I need to get somebody to wow. click on my freaking website. So uh, 50% of the population, it's, it's either gas or electric. So I'm going to right. alienate 50% of the people and get them to click on this with this fucking article. Joe Biden's going to take away your gas stove. Come on people really is joe biden really going to take away your gas is he really going to take away the gas stove i think more than likely is he'll probably make the gas go up even higher than he's already made it go oh up. yeah that's very probably. likely and that will take away <laughs> the gas stove because you can't afford to heat it so right. technically the article and is then, right and then and then we will all we will all have to have electric so we'll have to have electric heat for our homes, electric ranges, electric this and that. And then what's going to go up? Electricity. Then and the, and the power grid more. is going to be like, I can barely hold on now. We already know that California can't charge their cars. <laughs> During the summer, California is just like, uh, uh, ban all cars that are fossil fuels. Also, please don't charge your car. <laughs> 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 yeah. I want to get to the all story right. about the drugs and debauchery. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Let's found. get off. Let, yeah, let's get off of this. Okay. <clears throat> Basically, anyway, so and the the tack is that they're going to say it's not safe for you to cook with gas. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Thank I, you. I, I stumbled. The government I always listen to what the government says, so I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, and you should, you know, and and that's in addition to this show. You should always trust everything we say. We are reporting you the fa the realest fake news that we can find. The, I mean, uh, I would not intentionally mislead you, uh, except perhaps as a joke to make me laugh. I might do that, but as short of that, I would never present to you something that I thought wasn't true unless it was also funny. Funny or maybe strange. Maybe werewolves are involved or, uh, you know, uh, shadow people. Okay. All right. So I'm digging around this morning looking for news and stuff, and I stumble across this from uh, – this is a, a, a podcast or, or like a little – uh, it's a, it's one dude, I think, I don't know, called uh, Connecting Vets. Maybe it's not one dude. I don't know how many people. Okay. Is. Connecting Here Vets. It is. Here it is. <clears throat> Connecting Vets. Okay. So here's the story. Ba -ba -ba. Panic grips special forces community amid investigation into drugs and human trafficking. Okay. We're going to go through this whole story and okay. we got plenty right. of time. Okay. All right. <clears throat> nice picture of uh, super soldiers there on a, airplane with night vision goggles or whatever. Uh, panic and fear spread through the special forces community at Fort Bragg and Fayetteville in North Carolina as CID and FBI agents investigated members of the third special forces group and Delta force who allegedly were involved in drug and in one instance, human trafficking, according to nearly a dozen current and former military sources. The arrests began Thursday, January 5th, and culminated with a 100% recall and accountability formation for the 1st Battalion, 3rd Special Forces Group yesterday, yesterday being the 8th of January. It is unknown when the investigation into drug and human trafficking in the Fort Bragg area began, but it is known that the FBI became involved in investigating the deaths of Timothy Dumas and Special Force Operator Billy Levine in 2020 when both were found shot to death at a training site on Bragg. And there I was like, uh, really? That's interesting. So I'm gonna I followed those stories up in, in a <clears throat> uh, and uh, we'll come back to this. So I, I branched right here. I was like, what's going on with drugs and debauchery? Also, what about these these deaths? So here is the FBI where they posted uh, basically um, on their I don't know, FBI website, they posted that they wanted to construct a timeline of the deaths of Timothy Dumas and Master Sergeant William Levine III, uh, both found dead. And uh, let's see, 
Dumas, 44, and Levine, 37, found dead in Fort Bragg near Manchester Road in North Carolina on December 2nd, 2020. Investigators are seeking to create a timeline of their location and activities on the 1st and 2nd. A gray 2016 Chevrolet Colorado truck belonging to Levine was found at the crime scene near Manchester Road, and a dark-colored 2015 Ram pickup belonging to Dumas Sr. was found abandoned at another location. <clears throat> Okay, wow, that's that's kind of kind of strange, but uh, why wh- why would the FBI be like digging into that? What's going on, and why would these guys be killed? Uh, well, uh, this um, the <clears throat> Delta Force operator Billy Levine was involved in a, another homicide. Uh, this is a different story, but it's it's a prior event. Uh, Delta Force operator, he killed his best friend uh, in on December 2nd, 2020. William Levine and Timothy Dumas were found dead at a training site in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. <clears throat> but in 2018, uh, another family is seeking justice. Uh, speaking about the 2018 killing, Levine and Sergeant First Class Mark uh, Leshiker were best friends. They were both members of the 19th Special Forces Group and had been deployed to Afghanistan and Tad- Tajikistan. Tajikistan. I didn't even know that was a real place. I never heard of that before. Uh, Levine was suffering from a traumatic brain injury due to an IED detonating near him, which is why he was assigned to a desk job at Fort Bragg. He and Levine. <clears throat> wait, hold on. The, uh, sorry, Leshikar. Leshikar had the uh, had the uh, head injury. Leshikar and Levine would talk and argue uh, with one another like they were brothers. And Leshikar's sister uh, recalled in an interview uh, with Connecting Vets. Okay, okay. So, so there's still the debauchery, the modern debauchery case, but this is like a precursor. This is a precursor to the Dumas and Levine killings. This is the killing of Leshikar. So uh, these two guys, they went to like Disney World with their families together. And they, and they on the way back from the trip, Leshikar was starting to get paranoid and concerned that people were following him. Well, part of that was because Leshikar was uh, on this uh, prescribed, this drug called Tremadol, which he was addicted to. And he would also take Valium. And both Leshikar and Levine we're also known to use cocaine. So special operators with with traumatic brain injuries that used Tremadol, Valium, and and you know, a little coke, a little coke also. So <clears throat> after their va- vacation, <clears throat> uh, Leshikar was over at uh, Levine's house. This is my understanding. I maybe maybe have my, some of my details a little bit wrong, but. Leshikar was out working on his, uh, opened the hood of his car or something, said he was going to uh, work on his car. And Leshikar and Levine got into some sort of a scuffle, got in some sort of a fight. And Le, uh, Levine, I think, went into his house and he got his daughter to open the door. Both Leshikar and Levine's daughters were in the house, I think. Again, my facts may be messed up here. It, ultimately, uh, police were called and they found Leshikar with four bullet holes in his chest. Now, Levine's story was that Leshikar got aggressive and freaked out and attacked him and had a screwdriver. No screwdriver found at the scene. And more importantly, uh, in a release note from the investigation, SM1, that's Levine, was determined to be not credible. His own story changed and wasn't supported by any physical evidence. So it seems like there was maybe a little bit of an altercation or something, and then Leshikar ends up dead. Then, later that year, later that year, this is, uh, oh, this uh, that was 2018. In 2020, we find that, uh, we find that, Levine and Dumas dead on Fort Bragg looks like an assassination, perhaps a vengeance killing. So 
this is all setting like like some like what's going on at Fort Bragg with special forces. So Lush, so Levine kills Lushigar, Lushikar, best friend. Maybe drugs are involved. Maybe uh, you know mental mental damage is involved. Maybe something else. Then uh, by 2020, Levine is found dead, and, and along with Dumas, that could have been uh, maybe they killed each other. I don't think that's the case because they're investigating the timeline. So somebody else killed them, <clears throat> and uh, and 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 then it's all like swept under the rung like no clues can't find any facts fbi's got a post note out and that's it so okay so we know the fbi became involved in the in the uh investigating the deaths of dumas and billy levine in 2020 probably like a uh a vengeance killing or or an assassination but it could have been drugs it could have been all kinds of things uh so now we're back to present Last week's arrest began when the investigators receiving more evidence after an undercover law enforcement officer posing as an underage girl helped arrest a member of 1st Battalion 3rd Special Forces Group back in December. That individual was known to moonlight as a bouncer at a bar in Southern Pines frequented by the Special Forces community, a military source said uh, close to the situation. A Green Beret is alleged to have been pimping underage girls to the special forces community at drug-fueled parties in Southern Pines. This is what happens when there is no war, no direction, and an 18-month red cycle with no mission, said uh, special forces. So dudes are effing around with young kids and the craziest drugs, and all of these lives are ruined just because people are bored. I mean... People are bored. I mean, really? I mean, you 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 pump up these dudes. That you train them to be like killing machines to go on killers. like you know missions. You you train killers. You get them like you put them through uh through these training cycles where there's like intense isolation and they also are um there there's um stuff where you kind of dehumanize your targets and whatever and you basically psychologically prime these guys to be like real operators and then you don't send them on missions and they're just like. These these guys get these guys like to fight. <laughs> All right. Um, with information to, uh, of additional suspects on hand, CID and military police set up shop at one of the main bottlenecks uh, to entering and exiting Fort Bragg, the Long Longsgate Gate, Long Street Gate between the Post and Southern Pines. Uh, it was a trail of tears and douchebag cars. <laughs> said one special forces member who witnessed the scene last week. Uh, let's see. The dragnet led to questioning of 15 service members in total regarding drug related allegations and spread across various special operations commands. It's not just one unit or one little group. It's like it's all over the place. Hmm. The U.S. Army Special Operations Command is aware of allegations of drug involvement from soldiers assigned to USASOC uh, uh, units on Fort Bragg. A public affairs uh, lieutenant colonel, Mike Burns, said in a statement to, to this to, to this person reporting, John, whatever his name is, John something. Uh, we take all allegations seriously and are fully cooperating with CID. CID's investigation is ongoing, would be appropriate to discuss the status of their investigation. All soldiers have the right to due process, et cetera, et cetera. Panic began to, within the special forces community over the weekend with rumors swirling that the arrests were also connected to various murders around Fort Bragg in recent years. While other service members quickly disposed of their drug stashes and evidence of their nefarious activities, uh, several sources told, I mean, this guy, let me just say, Jack Murphy Okay, I understand a lot of people are giving you information and you are attributing it correctly, but like it's breaking up the flow of the story a little bit. It's breaking up the flow of the story a little bit. <clears throat> All right. Um, let's see. I can confirm that 15 soldiers assigned to USASOC were uh, questioned and released to their command. Two of those soldiers have been cleared of any wrongdoing. The overwhelming majority of USA uh, of Army Special Operations soldiers live in live with the special op SOF 
values every day, the use of illegal drugs or any other illegal activity goes directly against those values and does not reflect the behavior we demand from every soldier in our formation. Uh, okay. So, I mean, we're getting some boilerplate, like this is not okay. And we, we know it's not okay. So now I know that's a lot, Deke. What's that's, going on, man? We got special operators, drugs, murder, uh, tr- pimping, human trafficking. Is, is this just because they're bored and violent? No. You got some bad seeds and you pump these guys up. I mean, it, we've got a culture of guys who think that they have to look like muscle bound idiots. And that does something to the, the male brain, man. I'm sorry, but it does. And if you don't think it does, and you're one of these, you go to the gym every day, it does something to your brain, man. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm not saying it's a positive thing. It's a negative thing. I'm saying there is something that happens to the brain. You can tell these guys, I can, you, you know, you know, nine times out of 10, these guys that look like that and act like that, you know how, how their persona is going to be, don't you? I mean, you know, it, if I'm talking to a guy and he looks like he goes to the gym every day and he works out and he does tell me, yeah, I go to the gym five days a week. I can, I could guess with a 90% accuracy on all kinds of aspects of his personality. That might just be me being able to pick people out, but I can tell you exactly how he's going to be and how he reacts to stuff and how he thinks about stuff because all these people fit into a mold, you know? And it's it's like those special forces guys, they all fit into a mold. It's like a cop. A cop is a cop. It doesn't matter if he's in Houston or if he's in, if he's in Kentucky. A cop is a cop. They all fit the same mold. They all like I kind of get what you're I kind of get what you're saying. I mean, I can same shit. They all do the same thing. They all drive the same truck. They all do the same thing. It's a mold. They all want to be a robot. You're saying saying there's kind of a stereotype and there's a reason for the stereotype. And that's that there's a lot of common traits. Uh, So so these people that want to be special forces, JJ, you knew these guys in high school. I knew a guy named Daniel. Daniel was my really good buddy in middle school and high school. And the only thing Daniel talked about is devil dogs. When I turn 18, I'm going into the Marines. Devil dogs, baby. That's all I heard all the freaking time from him. He went into the freaking Marines. I think he's still probably a Marine to this day. He probably spent 20 years in there, but yeah. they're like that. And they, if you want to be a special forces and you want to be Navy SEAL, you've already got this type of mindset. So, and I'm not saying that they're all like it, like what's happening in the story, because it's, uh, they're obviously not, but right. you've, you've got these, these guys that already have this mindset. And then these particular guys don't have any kind of any type of, you know, inner voice and um, e- emotion and empathy that they uh, had was completely killed out of them. And we're, and we're way into like a little bit of speculation now. Cause we still oh, absolutely, right absolutely. So, I'm but I will, absolutely. I will stipulate, I will stipulate these guys. The, the, a lot of these guys probably as, especially like uh Delta force. Cause those are usually older operators, but these guys are high pressure, high stress, yeah. high demands all the time yeah, uh, as, as their, as their job. Different. And but, then in addition to that, they're married and some of the, the uh, very often, and it happens with police too. Uh, marriages with, pol- with police who are under high stress, um, you know, jobs or, or whatever. That, that, their marriages break up and fracture. Yeah. And then they well, have, so they have, you can't have a normal relationship with somebody when you are uh, exposed to a high stress situation all the time that does some right. all the chemicals in your brain eventually does something to your brain. Man. And they, and they don't have like, like, you know, you, just normal human males are like, basically like when they're, when they're like, something's wrong in, in like they're under stress or whatever. We norm very normally. We don't want to like seek help or be like, Hey, I'm having some sort of an issue or whatever. And these guys are like elite operators and so they have work pressure, they have family pressure, and then they they really can't afford in their own psyche, they can't afford the the perceived weakness of like, hey, something's wrong and I need to go to the shrink or I need to the doctor. I'm having stress. Yeah, if they perceive or, that they have or, any kind of weakness, they won't be a elite soldier anymore and whatever. Yeah, oh yeah. You yeah, you you think away. you're gonna get 
put on missions to go operate. If you have a flag in your record that says, uh, you know, I'm having uh, anger or stability issues or whatever. No, they're going to, they're going to put you on the desk. Like they put less car. Yeah. They, they cover it up and they hide it. And then you have stuff that happens like this because it just boils and boils and And, boils. These guys probably were never taught as a child to deal with certain type of emotions either. You know, I mean, so, that like there's I, i'm just saying there's a balance of forces here uh, of huge stresses and then there's a strong disincentive for them to actually get help and then when they do go and do are doing these missions we saw leshikar leshikar hit got hit by an ied and he had brain damage and a brain injury and he had to take like m- drugs or whatever so we're like america america training these super operators that could do like amazing stuff and then we're putting them in the field and getting them injured and then we bring them back and then they're like clearly damaged but we're like well you know we don't want it we don't want the bad pr so you know here's some dope and you know whatever and like we're like u.s government's a little bit ruining people's lives so uh surprise a little bit so uh i just uh i anyway so i i dove into this story i was like and i mean just like the just the the drugs and the pimping right now that would already be bad but then it leads back to this trail of like murder and a a lot of it could be related to like this circle cleaning itself up because how do these guys deal with uh problems and if they're if one of their problems is uh leshikar or levine who uh who is aware of the drug dope circulation circle or whatever and then and then oh now now that guy's under investigation for murdering leshikar and he could he could end up cracking and blowing it, blowing, uh, exposing all of us. Then what happened? Uh, well, now Levine's not a problem anymore, is he? Neither is Dumas, whoever that guy was. Uh, and then the invest, the investigation stalls because uh, nobody's got any info. Nobody that knows anything knows anything. I just found this to be super interesting. So uh, that is. That's what I had for you today. I I don't know. I think maybe I don't know. Maybe you guys will dig something up on this. Let's see what chat's saying. Uh, <clears throat> Jeremy says gas stoves could lead to it, what they said was it gas. Oh, this is back on the other thing. Gas stoves might lead to childhood asthma. <clears throat> I've, I've had gas. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, d- Mister E says let's give more money to the military. Let's try that. Let's try that. Let's see if that fixes. Maybe we'll tr- we'll try that. <laughs> I know he's kidding. Maybe that'll work. CIA, drug running, human trafficking, wet works. They've been doing this since World War II. Yeah. Oh, I was in the. Uh, this is a this is a hard segue. Uh, I was in the comic book shop a couple of weeks ago with my kids, and I saw at the end of a rack, I saw Todd McFarlane toys of wet works action figures. Yeah. I've seen those before from like 1992. Oh, wow. Very Um, old. So, uh, we were in, uh, I don't remember where we were at the other day. Was it a Walmart? I think it was a Walmart somewhere else back in the electronics. And you notice how sometimes they have Funko pops and they'll have like the, uh, yeah, the toys back in the electronics now. Some Wait, of the Walmart. Uh, okay. Stuff. I'm going to go with you, but I'm thinking of target. Cause there's just one section in target. That's like, like it's not in the toy section and, and Walmart's different. I know. Target, yeah, no, one second. Go Walmart ahead, go does ahead. the same thing. It's like in the electronics and it's got Funko pops and, yeah, you no know, action figures of different things and whatnot that wouldn't be in the toys. And yeah. uh, one of the action, like McFarlane toys and uh, the McFarlane. Have you ever seen his dragons series? Uh-uh. He's, he's on like series six and it, it's a huge big box and it's a dragon. I had every one of the series one, two and three. Those were things that I collected when I was married. And I've still got them put away in a box. I know exactly where they're at. They haven't been opened in probably about 10 years, that box. But I'm wondering, I haven't looked to see how much they are, but I walked through there the other day and I saw that McFarland Dragons. So, oh, 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 wow. So on, on the McFarland, on the McFarland toys page, it says, uh, there's a 2023 pre-order. They have a 2022 series and then it skips 
like 14 years and they have 2008, seven. Those are the uh, ones that I had. Those ones a long ass time ago. Let's, let's have a looky loo and see if. Here you go. Do any of these look familiar? This is 2005. Yeah. I've got every one of those. Look at that. Yeah, the water one there in the middle and the fire one. Yeah, I had every one of them. These are from 20, 2005. Yeah. Wow. I've got um I've got some McFarlane toys from or I have I have a there awesome. like I think it's the I think it's the first Cygor or whatever, maybe not the first Cygor, which is like this it's like this animated ape uh cyber yeah. ape thing from yeah. uh from uh from the Spawn comic. And yeah. It may not be the first one they did, but but it looks like it's hyper detailed. It's super realistic. Uh, and McFarland, and the cool thing about McFarland, like all, uh, uh, a cool thing about McFarland in toys is that in in a time when every toy company was basically licensing IP and making the same kind of cheap toys or or, or poor sculpts or whatever, McFarland was like, no, we're gonna make the best toys. He's basically like doing Trump in toys. He's like, we're gonna take, we're gonna take the the toys that we have, we're gonna do the best sculpts and the best molds, and we're gonna make the best toys. And uh mm-hmm. they were more expensive and they were way better. And they were better. Uh, they were and, they were I mean, better like, quality, period. Yeah. I mean, they were almost like statues. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, and they're still better. Like Mm -hmm. the stuff they put out now is, is he was 10 steps above any type of quality. The quality of the McFarland toys in the early two thousands was 10 steps above any type of toy that we had. So that forced Hasbro and all these other people to improve the quality of their toys to keep up with the McFarland right. toys. McFarland toys were he, just a better quality, better put together. You didn't have he the, pushed the um he pushed the he pushed the entire market to get very better. articulated. You know, if you got them out yeah. and moved them, they were very articulate. So uh this can't be right. 97 has he been making toys since 97 so mr e says he thinks he has the mcfarland werewolf figure from way back when so here you go uh uh i think this may be the one you mean but i don't know so how about that mr e is that right is it is it that one we'll see if he says yes or no but um yeah anyway i don't know why we're talking (laughs) so we went from we went from uh Oh, from 95. So we went from actual what works to uh, what works comic. <laughs> what works comic. What works comics from Will Sportelio from a million years ago. All right. Well, we had some extra viewers, I think, this morning on Rumble. And I want to say thanks, guys, for watching on Rumble, especially Wobbly Bits and Brian. Brian, of course, uh, are, 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 hardcore Rumble watchers. And if you haven't already, please hit like and subscribe. Follow us on Rumble. <laughs> Um, I, I'm just still reeling from this story. This, this, this murder case. I, I read through a bunch of it that I didn't exactly probably convey the best way, but anyway, I think that's all I got. We may end up a couple minutes early. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? I can't just make awesome news happen. Sometimes, look at, sometimes uh, there's not a lot of news that goes on and I don't like to force stuff. I mean, I, I don't like to, if something is not interesting, right. it's really hard for me to, uh, to be interested in it. You know, if, if, if stuff is not presented a, uh, if stuff, is ah, boring, we have a, we have a, we have a shocking development and here she what, is. What, where did mom go? Come here. Come here. Mom? mom, mom went to the gym. Come here. Are you serious? You were going to save my show and now you're just going to leave? Yeah. she's <laughs> She abandoned me to my own devices. That's right. And she slammed the door. All right. So I don't think we can do any better than this. We can just go out with uh, Dan Crenshaw's eye patch and his, and his knuckle eye, pot, eye patch. And I hope that uh, if Dan Crenshaw punched a hole in the House of uh, Representatives that Dan Crenshaw pay for it himself. Oh, who lives in a pineapple in the House of Representatives? D A N Shaw. Sorry, C R Crenshaw. Oh, 
I thought you were going to do the sea shanty song. I thought you were going to start singing oh, the sea shanty. Sea shanty. All right. <laughs> That's all we got this morning. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you haven't already, hit like and subscribe. And uh, we will be back tomorrow. Tomorrow's show is going to be better than this one. So just consider today a primer for tomorrow. And you're going to be like, yes, the Wednesday show was so good. Can't wait for the Thursday show. This is the best week ever. We are winning. Go America. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. <laughs>